Welcome everyone to the Predictive Playbook. This is NFL Week 10. We're in double digits now in the NFL season. We're coming down the second half of the regular season and the standings couldn't be tighter. We have the AFC West all with five wins, all four teams with five wins and something has to happen there in that division as well as the other divisions. The only division that's clear cut right now is the NFC East with Dallas uh, dominating and three game lead. But we have three games to break down for you guys and we are going to get started first here with uh, with the Vikings and Chargers game. And uh, this is a game I believe Buster is doing, right? Yes, correct. Yep, yep, yep. Just want to make sure. But the Vikings are three and five on the season and you could I actually make a case that they should have been five and three, but they're not. They're three and five. They're playing the Chargers, who are five and three. Yet this game is the Chargers only favored by three points. Over under is fifty three. Let's see what Buster's insights are and his best bet is for this matchup. Take it away, Buster. Well, thanks, John. Uh, yeah, I'm not going to touch a side here. What we are going to do is uh, bet the total over fifty three. It's a, a high high number. We actually got it at fifty two and a half. Uh, the other day. So uh, tough spot for many here. Uh, second road game, flying over to the West Coast, uh, and the overtime game with Baltimore last game. We firmly believe that the defense for many, which is having trouble as it is, is going to have a lot of trouble in this second uh, second game on the road. Uh, basically, when, when, you, when teams like these guys get together, they both offenses can just score in bunches. They're both over 24 points a game. And even though that adds up to 48, obviously, but I think it's because of what defenses they'll be going against. Uh, as far as Minnesota, they rank 30th against the run. The Chargers, they're dead last. And you got a couple of quarterbacks here that can take a full advantage of the play action game and, they will put up points in bunches, we believe, on Sunday. We uh, actually, to us, it might, the reason why we don't really like a side here, because we actually believe they could actually be the last guy, team with the ball wins. That's, that, that's how we're looking at it. We're looking at a game around 31-28, 35-28. Don't know who, who's going who's gonna to win here. But we really like a lot of points. And anybody that loves points, which we, we all love watching scoring touchdowns and stuff like that, uh, we think this is the game and we think this flies well over the total. And, of course, John, we uh, don't want to leave here without mentioning something uh, for you uh, with all the stats that you like to do. Uh, the Vikings on the road have gone 6-0 and over, six and over to the over already their last six games. So... I know it's a little bit high of a total, but I wouldn't be, so, be shocked if we see uh, 60 points this game. So uh, it's over for us. Oh, I love it, Buster. I like that. I like the play. I like the take. I like the breakdown. So the play from Buster is over the total. And don't be surprised if 60 points are scored. And I agree with that. Let's move on to Rocky Atkinson here. We're going to take a look at a 1 o'clock game on CBS Sports. Saints five and three, three and one on the highway, taking on the Titans seven and two, which I'm I'm no longer in denial of the Titans. I'm not fading them one more time for the next decade. They are seven and two. They have proven me wrong on two occasions with premium bets. Learned my lesson. Three and one home, and with me learning my lesson, maybe that's the time for everybody else to to bet on them and be successful. Tennessee favored by three points. This is at Nissan Stadium, Nashville, Tennessee. Total is 44 and a half points. Rocky, take it away and tell us where the best bet is for you on this game. Thanks, John. Uh, well, currently 73% of the public's on Tennessee here, but the line hasn't moved at all. Um, we have a Saints team that lost their starting quarterback, Jameis Winston. Uh, they're playing a Tennessee team that lost their star running back, Derrick Henry, for the season. Um, but Tennessee has a huge overall injury list right now. Uh, just a ton of injuries on that team. Trevor Simeon has come in for the Saints. He's done an okay job so far, uh, completing 59% of his passes for 408 yards. 
He has three touchdowns compared to no interceptions so far this year. Uh, the Saints defense is ranked number one in rushing defense, allowing only 73.8 yards per game on the ground. They have the number five defense in the league in points allowed. The play of the defense here we're going, is going to be the key to winning this game. I feel like the Saints will shut down the Tennessee rush game, and, and that's going to create Tennessee to have to pass. The Titans are ranked 26th in the NFL in passing, so I don't think they will overwhelm the Saints defense through the air here. The Saints have been solid on the road this year. They're 4-1 and one straight up, allowing only 14.8 points per game away from home. A few trends here. Uh, New Orleans is 8-1 and one straight up and against the spread the last three years as an underdog, including 3-0 and o straight up and against, against the spread this year. New Orleans is 36-16 and 16 against the spread of their last 52 road games. Tennessee is 1-5 and five against the spread of the last three years as a home favorite of three points or less. And the road team is 4-0 and o against the spread of the last four meetings overall in this series. So I'm going to play New Orleans plus the points here on Sunday. All right, I like it quite a bit, Rock. That good breakdown there, and you know I think that's a team that is flying under the radar. They they are putting together uh, some pretty good metrics too. They and I'll just mention a couple of them here, segueing myself into the Kansas City Las Vegas game. Uh, the Saints offensively have the best yards per point ratio in the league, and uh, not many people are 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 seeing it at least the way uh, we are as a panel. I, I think the Saints are very, very dangerous. So we're going to now talk about the Kansas City Chiefs for a little bit. And they are they're a team that I just, it's amazing. They've covered the spread uh, twice this year. And last year they ended the season on a, um, a just a horrific against the spread record. And if you were, uh, to give a shout out to Steve Merrill, if you were trying to catch that falling knife with that team, you uh, probably just about went broke. I don't see any reason in the world to to uh, support Kansas City until proven otherwise. And maybe it'll go the way I, it went with Tennessee, where I didn't think they were as good as they are. Uh, Kansas City's defense is just gets shredded. Uh, and speaking of yards per point, we have the Chiefs 20th with a 16 yards per point ratio offensively. And number 21 in the league, the Raiders are with a 16.1 yards per point ratio. Defensively, Las Vegas is 22nd in the league at 14.4. The Chiefs 17, 17th in the league at 15.1 yards per point. Now, you might say, if you haven't heard me talk about yards per point, well, what the heck is it? A yards per point is exactly that. It says how many yards does a team have to gain or allow for one point to be uh, recorded on the scoreboard on average. So in the case of the Chiefs, offensively, they require 16 yards per point to get one point on the scoreboard. Uh, we just talked about the Saints. They rank number one, and they are 11.8 so they require less yards to put up one point, therefore far more efficient with the football than the Chiefs are. And, and the Chiefs' yards per point is not getting better over the last three weeks. In fact, it is a horrific 19 over the last three games. So there's something wrong. And there's, you know, when you're driving the car and you start hearing that banging sound in the engine and it's a cylinder, uh, you, you know, you don't keep driving. Otherwise, it's just going to stop and you're going to be stuck. And I hope that's a good analogy for the Chiefs. There's so much talent on that team. It's unbelievable that they are underperforming the way they are. At the same time, defensive coordinators are smart. And I think the league as a whole has figured out how to stop them, how to stop Mahomes. Mahomes has already thrown more interceptions than last year or the year before that. And, and it's just a mess. Las Vegas, we all thought with the, the news of the head coach and this recent tragedy, um, that they would come unglued. And, and uh, I mean, who could say that they that it would be okay if they did? I guess that's the words that I'm trying to find. But they have really stunned me in their, their recovery and their performance, and they're playing their best football of the season right now. And to get 
you know, don't be fooled by KC being minus two and a half and thinking, oh, boy, this is the week they're going to do it. Don't bet like that. I am on the Raiders here. They're five and three. They're playing at home. Uh, you know, the over-under and the line projects to basically a, a you know, close game of 27-24 type of game that the, the Chiefs would win. I think it's going to be the opposite, and this is the Sunday night game, and I, I would take the home dog. And it's backed by a pretty darn good system here, which I will share with you in one second as soon as I get to it. All right, so here we are. We have uh, the Las Vegas Raiders. So you're going to... Uh, play on all teams in a game lined within three points on either side or pick. So it's a three-point favorite to a three-point underdog within that range. And it, there you are going against an opponent that has gone under the total by 35 or more total points in their last five games in a conference matchup. So that's all there is to it. And you can also say it this way, play against any team in a game lined within three points of either side of pick them after that team went under the total by 35 or more total points in the last five games. That supports the Raiders. That's hit 70% winners, folks, seven over the last 10 seasons and is 25 and 15 against the number of the last five seasons. So, guys, I am on the Raiders. So, uh, I'll put myself back here with the panel. Guys, I really appreciate the picks. Great work yet again. And at Make sure you get over to sportsmemo.com and take advantage of the discounts that are going on right this moment. And we'll be going on through the weekend and beyond. College basketball is here. And there's a lot of season subscriptions out there. You wouldn't go wrong with any one of the three of us. And you can get all three of us basically with these discounts for the price of just one. So take advantage of this and... Make sure you get our college football cards this week. I love the college football card. I love the NFL card this week. I personally will be putting out a 5%er in the NFL. Uh, Buster, are you, you got anything big going th this weekend uh, that you know of? I actually uh, have been putting out nine, and for $9, I've been putting out 5%ers the last uh, couple of weeks. I had uh, Auburn two weeks ago, and then I had a CFL 5%er that won last week. So, I put up a C, uh, for a college football 5%er, only $9, over at uh, sportsmemo.com. It's great stuff, Buster. about you, Rock? Yes, I have a top NFL play going Sunday, uh, loaded now, 67% NFL this year. Um, I also have a – I think I have a 5% college football loaded for Saturday. I have NBA college basketball, NBA 77% this year so far. I've started off 4-0 college basketball, 67% NHL. Uh, just getting it done in a big way. And uh, Sports Memo actually gave me a, a special code here. Uh, you can get 30 days of my picks for only $99 using ROCK30, R-O-C-K-3-0. Uh, that's all picks, all sports, 30 days, only 99 bucks. ROCK30. R O C K three zero. That's awesome stuff, Rock. And for ninety nine bucks, folks, uh, when you ever we we all will have sales like that from time to time. It's Rock's turn now. So for ninety nine bucks, uh, I'm sure uh, you have spent ninety nine dollars uh, many many times on stuff that will not give you the value of what Rocky Atkinson will give to you. And I do include cases of beer uh, being bought that total ninety nine dollars in that statement so that'll do it guys that's a wrap on behalf of buster rocky and myself and sportsmemo.com wagertalk.com may all the wins be yours and thanks for watching